Hello there everyone and welcome back to episode 11 of us playing as the United States of America. I'm your host, Mr. Mokalover, and last time we returned Mexico to where it really belongs, but sky high. One of the strategic air command assets on the west coast, Vandenberg was known for being the center of 24-hour strategic bombing against targets across the Pacific and China, coordinating the bases in the Pacific for refueling, meaning it was a prime target for nuclear weapons. Much of the base lays in ruin, though it wasn't much of a challenge for getting it back into operational capacity. The Air Force is eager to restore its old bomber fleet, though its purpose may be called into question as we move east and out of the range of bombers from the base. Fly, Eagles, fly. And of course, the basement. Another secret to the Enclave was there was a plan to restore the United States without releasing a modified virus into the air. One that involved the most advanced robots of the day, the calculator. However, those plans failed. And now we know why. Evidence from the wreckage and battle near the complex showed the Brotherhood is still launching all-out assault on the complex, banning and destroying the calculator once and for all. Suffice to say, they accomplished just that. Most of the calculator systems are damaged beyond repair, and the code that worked for them wiped from existence. It could take decades to restore everything and if, that's, if everything works out in our favor. Thankfully, the base nuclear plant power plant is still functioning. And we managed to get it back online, however. The robots that are once stored here are gone and likely never to be repurposed. Darn it all to heck. The changing of the guard. Oh, it was a light, snowy day at Colorado Springs. Despite forecasts of the contrary, it felt regardless, almost as if the heavens were weeping. In the center of a reclaimed park stood a near, newly built monument, a single black obsidian obelisk to the side. Dozens of names were engraved. Those who were on duty at no red on 23rd of October, 2077. Those who watched the world end a nuclear fire, and those who never made it out of the facility alive. Those remains were recovered, identified, and entombed beneath the obelisk. President Douglas Granite stood before the monument. Around the president stood a few military personnel and the new staff of a restored NORAD, of whom would soon begin the work protecting America's skies once more. A crowd had also gathered to watch the ceremony, though more curiously, curiosity from understanding of what the monument represented. The president approached the monument with a somber expression and saluted the fallen airmen and officers. Military members vowed followed suit, and as well as a crowd in varying degrees, not a single word was uttered. A moment of silence for those who had fallen. Rest easy, your watch is done, and way up in the great northern commonwealth. What drives people of the Great North? The adventure? Sights? The untapped riches that lie beneath its mountains? Maybe it's the sides of Yellowstone National Park, whatever the reason. The President has announced the formation of the Great Northern Commonwealth and has announced a program to sponsor any and all individuals and their families for work projects, as well as security for various postings that can't be covered by the U.S. Army at this current time. There's also the prospect of the caravan routes opening in the far north, and many caravans are introducing higher wages for security. Yeah, it's cold, as we're currently doing Operation Damocles, it's red versus blue, uh, which we read before, but, you know, Vulpus and Colt, there remains a threat unlike anything we've faced yet, and Instrumentari, without a doubt, the most potent intelligent organization in the wasteland. And Colonel Callahan is going to dismantle it, and do so, he's going to do, do it with a fox's head. Even the fox's head is gone, like I said last time, too. Uh, I'll do that one, and it come. Ooh. Anything there? Nope. Anything yet? Economic precision is good. Oh, robotics? Oh, and more economic precision. Sure, why not? CNC bots? Why not as well? Uh, you know, we can scavenge vehicles, why not? And, what do we got? Cool. It's red versus blue. Kaiza Shrimatari. The best intelligence organization on the wasteland, having capabilities beyond anything the rest of the wasteland was capable of. Even then, CR Rangers were left in the dark and unable to properly combat Vulpus and Colt and his forces. Two stuck acting as wasteland lawmen and military scouts, Vulpus could operate with impunity right under their noses. The campaign of terror he led in the Mojave spread rumors like wildfire across the NCR now has laid at the feet of Colonel Callahan and Unclaimed Intelligence. But I refuse to believe the wider tales like how uh, Vulpus was half a man, half dog mutant. He followed up on the clues and rumors using old school counterintelligence tactics and tricks that the Frumentari weren't used to. He had a few promising leads, but he needed to expand his scope. Speaking with Granny, he proposed Operation Damocles, a systematic campaign to destroy the Frumentari using everything the old Enclave Intelligence Officer had at his, at his disposal, as well as developing a few new ones. Then he looked over the proposition, as well as evidence that Callahan had supplied during the NCR's run with the Frumentari. While it was a more direct action kind of man, Callahan knew what, was, what he was doing. He gave the operation the green light. Let's get this son of a gun, the fox catcher. Callahan knew that in order to truly defeat the Frumentari, he would need to cut the head off the beast. That meant capturing Volpus in Colta. Of course, Vulpus would never just show himself, but Ka he knew Kaiser didn't tolerate failure. If he could dismount and disrupt their operations enough, Vulpus would slip up in a desperate attempt to save face. He already wasn't liked among his peers, only having the protection of Kaiser to save him. If he lacked that, then he would go into a panic. So if Callahan didn't capture him, then at the very least, Kaiser would kill him. Callahan got to work, coordinating with whomever he could. His Mitchell's mission is simple yet complicated. Bring in every from kid for interrogation. If not that, kill him. Whichever comes first. Maybe he's already dead, though. Santiago Sojourn. Carousel, a squad of soldiers have arrived, having gotten lost trying to find MacArthur Air Force Base, claiming there's a detachment of Enclave survivors. And you know what? I think it's time for us to go in.
We gave them enough time to be peaceful and whatnot, and they need to be put down. Further development requires their Air Force Base. Well, Colonel Santiago did a fine job keeping the base in working order. We got the power of the West Coast backing us up, and we can easily restore the base back to pre-war status. Further development, Males, uh, Maelstrom Air Force Base. Another of the Air, Northern Air Force bases. This one appears to be home to an odd tribe who like to fly kites. People-shaped kites. Legacy of Vault 100. Jacobson and his holy quest. The old country, an attempt at a civilization, was born from Vault 100, whose insidious test was exposing half the vault to radiation. Those that survived turned to ghouls, and those who didn't go feral became the old country. The humans of Vault 100, however, went on to form the Rock Rangers, a raider faction that was terrorized by Western, Western Washington in the crusade to remove the affliction that mutated their vault compatriots. By now, however, they are a force to be reckoned with in Washington, or were until we showed up. Much of the fanatical members lay dead before our feet, and those who survived were ranting about the leaders who will save them. Granted, when one of them is a self-styled ra raider crusader, some mutated women from a lake, and someone who gets all his information out of an eight-ball toy. We're not concerned. We can't even kill the ghouls. Strange women in eight balls distributing knowledge? That's no basis for system of governance. It's because of a Montana. The uh, wild card chapter of the Brotherhood, or Sisterhood. Despite civilizing most of Montana, internal strife and conflict with enclave forces in MacArthur led to them continuing to be a controversial, if not intriguing, chapter of the Brotherhood. What was to be another Brotherhood Star Wars chapter? It was ruled by a veteran of the Midwestern Wars, yet the chapter would grow on to become something of an anomaly in the Northern Commonwealth, the Sisters of Steel. Pink and blue, I see what the devs did. <laughs> nice. Heaven's Gate. The largest, most successful, and most militant movement that has decided to make Idaho its home. These mutants are worse than communists because of the least godless communists don't use the Lord's name in vain. St. Michael and his flock within the lands of Heaven's Gate attempted to spread the word of God what many, well, what they deemed unholy lands, filled with sinners and pagans. Fortunately, St. Michael considered a lot of people unholy sinners and pagans. Despite claiming to heed the word of God, he failed to realize that. God bless the Enclave, and God bless America. Even alliance with Khazar failed to stop his undoing, and his holy crusade ended with U.S. forces, uh, crashing through his city with divine vengeance. While many of his followers fell into the fighting, we captured St. Michael. Well, many of his more firm uh, followers have taken to the mountains, but they can eke out resistance to us. It gets rather cold in the winter. Listen to Colonel Callan's proposal. See a trial will bring them to the light of civilization. The Jesus, or the the children of Edom in the day of Jerusalem said, raise it even to the foundation. I like that one, but let's see. For St. Michael, we'll watch over Slock for all of eternity. Callan never said he was a full reformist. Just a little patriot, they followed orders. This plans for St. Michael, who saw his fitting, and others saw his horrifying. For St. Michael wasn't put to death for his crimes, despite many who wished to see it. As he lay in his cell, he was defiant, belligerent, and saw American laws below the Lord's law, which is all what he was answered to. He spoke that his actions were the word of the Lord, but only his narrow mili militaristic view of the law. He was charged with crimes against humanity, but was not sentenced to death. Instead, he was sending and preaching his sermons to the most loyal followers for the rest of his days. Why? Callahan showed his brain in a modified rubble brain, chastis, and set it up to where he must constantly speak <clears throat> uh, for eternity to a firm flock who have met all of the same faith. He will be head in prison until his service and system fall and collapse, which by our estimates will be in a few hundred years. Deuteronomy 511. You should not misuse the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord will not hold anyone guiltless who misuses his name. For Exodus 21:14. If, however, a man acts presumptuously towards his neighbor, so as to kill him craftily, you are to take him even from my altar, and may, that he may die. Yeah, there you go. Good. As you can see, we're pushing in here, too. I'm not super concerned. They have 93 divisions. We've killed off 3,000, 5,000 so far. Uh, air should be pretty decent. I hope they're around here. Mm, it's okay. It's not great. Stopping the White Legs. This is from Anna Brown in Southern Utah. Fighting continues in Utah as the United States campaign against White Claws continue. White Claws, as you all know, are surprisingly well armed tribes with a good grasp of guerrilla warfare. Despite their primitive appearance, the White Claws are formidable fighters fighting on their home turf. White Claws ambushes are common. Of course, the United States troops advance with caution. However, the effectiveness of the storm drums against power armor is questionable best. How do they learn to fight so well? Oh, they do harmony. Nice. And more uh, war support. Fantastic. Words of Honduras. Of all the nations to survive the Great War, Honduras was not on our list. We could rekindle our relationship or remove this challenge to our power. Restore no rad. Let's turn in green. Let's kick this thing on. Power of Yellowstone. Anesthesis project. Before the Great War, Poseidon Energy began to tap the magma beneath the Yellowstone caldera to build the world's largest geothermal power plant. The ecologists refused to finish the great work, but we're in charge of it now. I've activated that Hesphestus could power the region as sort of a Hoover Dam for the North. Unlike Poseidon, we aren't interested in corporate greed, nor are we willing to cut corners anymore. We have the best minds in the Enclave, the followers in the NCR at our disposal. The project can be easily completed without disturbing Yellowstone's natural beauty, which incidentally took a massive hit by fallout from the Great War. Light of the North. Triagers at a point. Light of the North. Suckle Secrets of Vault 24. Vault 24 was intended to be an experiment of Vault and Project Safe House. 
However, the residents of the vault seem to have developed a strange fascination with time. So much so that their impressive technical abilities seem almost secondary to the strangeness. When questioned by our troops and representatives, they only answered in cryptic sentences, and when questioned further, they only said we would come to understand in time. Suffice to say, the officer in charge was ready to annihilate the entire vault, but decided against it. Curiously, when we checked the data logs, our emissaries of the vault appeared to have been spent far longer in time inside the vault than outside. Well, our tech say it might be an issue with our system's internal chronometers, but for now, we're willing to let Vault 24 become another version of Vault City in the Wasteland. Who is this doctor they speak of? Nice. True capital of Mexico. The San Anagon, his robot father and siblings vanquished, and the cartels corralled in the fall of our wars, never having to bloom again. There's a rising chorus in La Yaqui to return the capital to its historic center in Mexico City. The city itself, however, suffered under Tlaloc and further burned in the flower wars, however. That's not the growing movement from the Baja and even America itself. To return there is no easy task for the Baja government, however, assistance from the northern neighbors and benefactors can see the Mexican flag rise above Zocalo Plaza once more. We'll put it once so we can build it again. I don't even pay attention to the support we've done very well so far. Sure, why not? I'll get away for this stuff here, too. Do you like something to do here, sir? Oh, never mind. He died. That's the way we like him. So, right now, what are we doing around here? Safe Haven, Northern Cons, Silex. Not far, son, huh? Trap no shell. Interesting. How long would it take for us to justify on them? Not long. Very nice. They're quite spread out, and they're limiting us because right now we have a focus we can do against them. I know I could pair drop on them, but at the time of this recording, I'm extraordinarily tired and uh, don't really feel like setting all that small stuff up. Currently. Maybe later on in the episode. We'll see. Pretty good overall. Industrial support, life givers good too. Power armor. Um, I might wait for uh, maybe a terrain trait, perhaps. How close is Ulysses? Eh, he's the third of the way there. He might be able to do that, perhaps. Maybe, maybe not. As we're probably annexing some people here, May 3rd. That'd be fantastic if we could. Hey, there we go. Not sure we annex, but whatever. The Commonwealth Remnants, yeah? Expedition to the Olympus Tribe. Remnants. Wow. Oh, all the Canadian nations up here. Nice. Oh, well, not all of them. No red online, though. We're close, but not quite. No red online. The president today and oversaw the resumption of operations of the North American Aerospace Defense Complex in Cheyenne Mountain to a crowd of military officials and a few onlookers who happened to be at the Colorado Springs area in time. Uh, the president thanked the hard work of the men and women who managed to get the old base back up and running, as well as reinforcing the point that the United States is here to protect America, and that this was a vital part of America's defense. Operations. Uh, the complex is expected to open up in the coming days, and the Air Force is eager to begin operations. Awesome. The Mormon faith. Fewer Mormons were perversely and intensely American people viewed with suspicion by the rest of the nation. Two centuries of independence have only encouraged their sense of apartness. How should we handle them? I feel safer already. Look at DEFCON. Offensive alert system pre war to define readiness status at from 5 at peacetime to 1. Nuclear war, we've only been at 1 once. Rebuilding the Pacific Northwest. Let us dredge the harbors of Portland, clear the rubble of Seattle, and restart our Columbia's river dams. And take care of that super mutant infestation, the DEFCON system. The, def the defense of readiness condition, or DEFCON, is a matter of which the military will be prepared for combat. Each level gives a series of buffs towards the whole of the military and enhances their capabilities as a fighting force. 
However, the higher on the list it goes, the greater social unrest, war support, as well as political power gains affected the DEFCON levels are 1. The highest attack, cosmic movement, greatest production, but slash is political power gain and war support with the highest state of social unrest. It's also only available for 30 days, where in case it must be chosen again, DEFCON 2. Higher attack, higher movement, greater production, but lower political power gain and war support. DEFCON 3. High attack, high movement, high production, but low political power gain and war support. DEFCON 4, buff to attack. Movement, production, but debuff to political power gain and war support. And DEFCON 5, standard DEFCON level, and provides no buffs or debuffs. Seems straightforward. At DEFCON 5, daily political power gain goes up. And weekly war support gain. Huh. Alright. We may have liberty to the people of Utah. Uh, but it's having its own, it seemed to act like it. Many associate us with the Enclave purists who added aid to Kaiser before the Great War, the United States government to crack down on Mormonism due to their opposition to, uh, well, security protocols. To Mormonize, we're occupying a people who have been free since the Great War. As such, new Canaan and guerrillas kill our brave men and women, fanatics who quote the words of Joshua Graham and swear to carry the fire of the Holy Spirit until they stand before the Lord for judgment. Although we promise the First Amendment protects Mormon faith, we have to do something to hold this troubled land down. Promise new Canaanites autonomy than the United States. They shall tower before we do. Yeah, raise it down. And waging war against the good people is bad for the soul. Yeah, we'll do that one. Our lost brethren. Uh, for some time, refugees from Heaven's Gate and traders from further northeast spoke of a force described themselves as the U.S. Army. They seem to be holding out in parts of Montana near Missoula, directing uh, resource gathering efforts and providing security and safety to local populations. Along with the soft martial law, censorship, and the occasional prejudice against act against ghouls, pseudo means, and occasion to form human. In short, that sounds like a splinter faction of the Enclave. It's a party that are led by a well-to-do commanding general, not a megalomaniac moron, so fortunately it's not a Richardson's son. Send a search team. MacArthur's last stand. Our return to MacArthur was not a warm one. We knew we'd find some remnants of the battle, but nothing like this. The bodies remained frozen where they fell, some Enclave, some other raiders, some even some Brotherhood forces. The base itself is destroyed as the Enclave defenders desperately try to deny the enemy any advantage with taking the base. Others were seen holding in desperate last stand to buy the survivors that fled to Nevada just enough time to evacuate. Searching the bunkers and lower levels found that even more bodies, signs of heavy fighting, and not a survivor in sight. Sianto took herself broke down in tears as a, she saw the bodies of her men and women strewn about. Combat casualty forces are collecting the bodies for examination and record keeping. If there's one sliver lining, we've managed to find the schematics for the Hermes Special Forces armor, which Colonel Callan managed to find hidden with the body of his cousin. Prepare a proper bureau, full military honors. Hermes, oh my gosh. New, huh? 25 armor, huh? 9, 14, and 7 soft attack. Nine, fourteen. Fascinating. Interesting. For the destroyer Wood Bay Naval Air Station. The Sky Sentinel of the Northern Pacific, uh, Wood Bay Naval Air Station, which is a remote yet strategic location near Canada, proves its worth for preparations uh, moving into the Great White North. Further store Spanish Fork Armory, another National Guard armory, but this one played a part in the shaping of Utah thanks to the White Legs Raid. I get more tech, right? Of course. Yeah, there you go. Uh, the airfield at Eagle Rock on the banks of Upper Colorado. We have found a fully functioning airfield and it wasn't a pre war one. Are we annexing the claim jumpers? Oh, de go to DEFCON. Oh. Olympus Tribe, Commonwealth Remnants from the Guns. No? Alright, well, they're next, I guess. This won't take too long. Trade from Hawaii, turn away. Strike up a year long deal with trade with them? Why not? Got tons of energy, too. Tons of this stuff as well. Wow. Arm hardening is nice. Further store for Douglas. The Utah National Guard post has been expanded and upgraded by the new Can Canaanites for the defense. Uh, further store Hill Air Force Base. Uh, fighter focused. Oh god. Oh, actually, it's shifted, huh? Fighter focused. 
uh, base in Utah. It serves the main Air Force base of the nascent new Canaan Air Force. Open the nursery. The EP had its own plans to survive the war. The GAC might rebuild civilization, but what are the buffalo, the wolf, the bald eagle, the mothman? To the end, uh, the EPA has prepared a facility to revive our great nation's wildlife. The nursery is a pre-war facility buried in the remote valley, led by a pre-war AI who called herself Diana. Although the EPA thinks we can use the facility to terraform the wasteland into a paradise, Diana refuses to aid us and claims we'll squander her gifts. If we get her cooperation, we can rebuild the American biospheres and restore bald eagles, buffaloes, and woolly mammoths to the American wilderness. Persuade Diana to aid us in the heel of the wasteland. Several gigs from America. Enclave, rebuild your country one town at a time. Is pre every pre-war AI insane? Shut off the power. Persuader. Our nation's mighty bird. The Great War saw the extinction of the mighty bald eagle. With the nursery, we can make our birds soar the skies once again. We can make it even better. Since we're taking the nursery, our biologists and genetic engineers have been hard at work to create, recreate extinct pre-war species. Chief among them is our national symbol, the bald eagle. We've been hampered by the fact that the nursery wasn't ex exactly stocked with birds, but rather domesticated bees of burden. Seems that our national bird wasn't very high on Diana's list. While we were willing to overlook that, attempts to re-engineer from what we had were slow at best. Then we found Vault 96. What was supposed to be an arc of genetic material for repopulation, but of course Vault Tech found a way to mess it up. The vault's largely decayed and abandoned, but aside, something, some looting and a mess on the X-001 chamber. As genetics bay remained largely untouched, scouring it, our excavation teams have found a trail of untouched genetic material for the bald eagle, and found them sent west to the nursery under heavy escort. Like America, our national bird shall rise again. Make them massive with two heads. Uh, I don't know about the two heads thing. The two heads are cool. I don't think that's really what we want here. I don't think it'll take too long for us to destroy these guys, but I could be wrong. You never know. Brothers for Canada Air Force Base, maybe, eventually? Uh, yeah. Uh, Cascadia, North, uh, East, Northwest Commonwealth. Cascadia, the Northwest Commonwealth. That is a question being asked by thousands of Americans in San Francisco from, from then San Fran to Seattle, comprising the of the northern reaches of California, the former Nevada Territories, and Oregon and Washington. The Northwest, New Northwest Administration has claimed that there are more important matters to attend to face the names. Cannibalism, roving supermutes, psychotic raiders, and the remnants of the Washington Brotherhood. For now, the administration is working tirelessly to restore law and order, and large swaths of food are being shipped north. In return, the vast technological treasures of Seattle and the commerce of Portland are thoroughly being explored to benefit America's whole. Never a dull moment. Gek it, why not? Give infantry implants, huh? Nice. What about trucks? Mobile recon support. Very good. We'll do Canada once so they're all gone and dead. Northern cons economically, yes. Keep pressuring them, yes. Words of Honduras. Oh, Adol, Dante. Plan Dante. New Canaan is the only bastion of civilization in the Utah wasteland has reached out to tribes and attempted to shepherd them. However, the leaders have become immortal and corrupt, and perhaps the seven heavens are in reality the nine circles of hell. Words of Honduras. As we advance further into Mexico, we caught wind of the Guerros de Honduras. A uh, militaristic uh, nation claiming to be fighting off the horrors of South America. The thing is, no one can quite agree on what lies south of Honduras and the Darien Gap. The traders from South America claimed the Raiders' nations and monsters of the jungles and were inclined to believe the Hondurans. Despite appearances, they are a stable and sizable government in the South and we are more than open to receiving additional assistance from the United States to the North. You guys like power armor? Let Mexico deal with it. Anything down there can't be that bad. Go to Phoenix. Uh, President Juarez today saw a monumental event commemorating the return of Mexico City as the rightful capital of the Mexican people. Then began with a somber tone on and remembering their lives lost in the Great War and his suffering under the lock and his robot sons, the Aztec and Mayan Flower Awards, as well as a special event dedicated to the Republic of the Rio Grande. Special appearances by the American President, Douglas Granite, gave a moving speech about the strength and endurance of the Mexican people, as well as reaffirmed the close ties shared between the two nations. President Juarez closed the events in Mexico City, announcing a week long fiesta to celebrate the spirit and tenacity of the Mexican people. The Patria es Libra. Cool. Very nice. 
thrust their engines. Battle wheel is nice. Oh. Um, I've read, read about Ruin Factory before, I believe. So if you want to read about this one, please go to ahead. Please back on the menu. Advanced power systems? Or better attack planes. Yeah, let's go to the attack planes. Heavy lifter bots. Dectrons. Reactive materials. Northern Pacific Sky Sentinel. Ooh. The Navy's Northwest Air Station served guard at the entrance to the Puget Sound and was the first to hear the disaster aboard the USS Even Atoll. Further, it served as a base for naval strikes against Canadian uh, resistance during America's liberation of Canada from the communist sympathizers. Uh, despite being an important station in the Pacific Northwest, it was spared many of the nuclear bombs that fell upon Seattle, however. Uh, it was a remote location in desolate winter conditions left the, der left the derelict asylum. While there's evidence that the Washington Brotherhood and Raiders from Cuba attempted to enter the base, the large gold population we dealt with indicated they weren't all too successful. New World Tricks Airborne Ferals Hallucinogenic gas plant monsters The world is a dangerous place without the United States, so we should remind the Legion of that. Spanish Fork Raid Spanish Fork Armory was a National Guard army that Alongside a tool army depot, served its fortification protecting the south of New Canaan, this town from the southeast. However, Spanish Fork was raided by the White Legs, who still the plethora of weapons stored there. This event was a turning point in Utah, allowing the White Legs to rise to power and the beginning of the gradual decline of New Canaan, of course. Until we arrived, of course. <clears throat> and found the base derelict. Now the base under our control, we can restore to working order and allow us to conduct counterinsurgency operations in the region and beyond, even from the tactics developed. Send them in anytime, any place. Oh god, we need a lot of stuff here, don't we? Good lord. There you go. Commonwealth becomes a federal commonwealth? Yeah. Well, why not? The Hanford Atomic Reactor, before the Great War, the Hanford Reactor produced much of America's plutonium and energy. Although it's currently occupied by ghouls, if we deal with them, we can restore the planet and revive the region. Obviously, we treat ghouls. How we treat them will affect the outcome. Mr. President, the engineers of the Harf Hanford Reactor Setup reported ghoul squatters who refused to leave. The ghouls claim they have maintained the plant since the Great War and demand compensation for repairing the facility. We could force them out, but they could damage the plant on the way out, and the resistance to radiation may be useful. What should we do? Give us the plasma grenades. Give them the stock of the new Cascadia Energy Company. Farson Project. Traders and followers of the, uh, speak of a frenzy of a curious subspecies of human. At the very least, they keep to themselves and are willing to trade. Uh, United we stand for immune free land. Oh, wait, sorry. Force of habit for the purest free land. America was once described as a melting pot of cultures and people. Now that once more we're a melting pot of people, cultures, and species, all living together usually in harmony. Fort Douglas was our installation near Salt Lake City that was primarily tasked with pacifying the city as well as protecting the nearby proving grounds. Post war, it served as a primary military base for New Kingdom. Once the city was founded and the base cleared of threats, it continued to serve as a center for New Kingdom military activity, protecting both the western approach to the city as well as the last line of defense before the city itself. It even proved a tough nut for our own forces to crack, but we've taken it, and the work the New Canaanites did has kept the base in remarkably good shape for 200 years, making a welcome return to our fold. Well, let's get the place clean. New world tricks. Much has left changed on the North American continent in the past 200 years since America left. First and foremost, many of the horrors of the pre-war world that were hiding just under the surface were sealed beneath a classified label. Now, many of the horrors have been found, and just as many more were joined by some post-war mutated horrors. The Legion may take pride in terrorizing a town by crucifying everyone, but let's see how they like it when we drop a death claw on their heads. Hmm. What horse can be unleash? Hill of the God. A vital component of the Air Force Material Command. With the weapons produced at Dugway and Tool, Hill Air Force Base was tasked with moving them out to either be deployed or moved to the more secure storage out east, despite this. The base was overlooked by the Chinese nukes, possibly as they were too focused on Salt Lake City or Dugway. Regardless, the base served as the main base for the small new Canaan Air Corps protecting the Mormon skies, or at least trying to get trying to anyways. Much like Fort Douglas, the base is in remarkably good condition, thanks to the efforts of New Canaan, and the Air Force is ready to begin supply operations for missions in the north and east. Very, very nice. And as you can see, we're getting ready to go to war with that good old uh, claim jumpers, or we wanted to, but where eagles fly. After several successful weeks of work, we've not only recreated the bald eagle, we've made it even better. Ooh. Well, we made it the largest bird of prey in the pre-war era. It gave it ability to live anywhere across the United States and set it prey to be the species such as Cazadores and Stingwings. We've also set them uh, not to be human as prey since they can easily be picked, picking up a small child, but that's beside the point. 
Uh, today, several hundred were released in the first of many waves set to repopulate America's bird across the continent. Journalists and reporters were in awe as they soared in the sky, symbolizing the very spirit of the reunited states itself. I'm not crying. It's just dust in my eye. Ranch is second developed. Ah. Restore Blue Castle nuclear plant. Oh, that's interesting. Restore oh. Naval Base San Diego. Yeah, that'd probably be good to do. Cool. Keep doing that, and uh, close out of that one. Why now? Dredging Portland's Harbor. Damage from the Great War and the pirates of the mob rendered Portland's Harbor use, uh, useless for deep sea vessels. If we repair this, we can begin to restore Portland to its pre war glory. With the destruction of the mob, we need to decide what to do with the pirates who made it home. We could scatter them through the waves, but some of the pirates claim they were engaging in aggressive commerce given the lack of protection for shipping in the region. Imprison the leadership and scatter them through the wastes. Use them to revive the United States. Merchant Marine. Ooh. Monst Masters of the Sea. Nice. The trolls of the war, and we've broken the troll war, but that's just left us with a group of super mutants under rule. We need a solution to the problem, and how to handle super mutants will determine our options. The troll war has given rise to an odd conundrum. Although obviously we'll execute the war criminals, and a super mutant who used to live in Ball 6, Betty, has claimed that she and many of the super mutants are victims of circumstances, and treated humans under the rule no worse than neighboring tribes would have. Betty, based on her vault education, has invoked constitutional claims on behalf of her and the other super mutants and demanded a place in the United States. And of course, the captive population of super mutants could have economic applications. Cute, but no reason to deviate from standard procedure. Honestly, we'll make them honest er <coughs> men. Because we've chosen to integrate them. Alright, so be it. Defcon, not bad. We're going to continue doing all this stuff. You're getting more air, uh, army XP. We close out of this one. Mexico, we're going to leave pretty much Mexico alone at this point. Uh, we did everything that we can pretty much with Mexico, as far as I can tell. I might be wrong, but you know, it is what it is. And what do we got here? Something out of place? Ah, oh, yes, bicycles. Trucks, good. I'll do a question in Canada once we're fully done with Canada, too. So, Russia, Olympus drive economically? Oh, you betcha. We don't have advanced naval stuff, which is, ah, oh, hurting me so much. Respiratory, I can answer. Oh, yes, please. Help build missile base. Help build missile base was the army component of the Commonwealth Ballistic Defense Network, or complex. I was tasked with maintaining the missiles and ensuring the base remained in cities in a ready, safe, and tectonic, unstable region of the divide. Much of the base has been looted or scrapped, largely from the two communities that sprung up around the base in the intervening years. Thankfully, they didn't activate the nuclear warheads in the base, because that might have caused some problems. It's changed underground readings. They've only gotten worse. Look at the more sensors we activate. One or two malfunctioning things is a thing, and some of the readings are to be expected of age, but every last one of them? We even install new ones, and they're reading the same thing. There is something down there, and it's not mole rats. Something burrowing underground beneath what is our sole nuclear missile base in the region presents a huge security concern. There appears to be a place where these burrows are closer to the surface than the rest, and it might benefit us if we dig down there and find out what exactly it is down there. Engineers have pulled some excavation equipment, but awaiting orders from higher. Let's find out what's going on down there. So we've done all of these. We've done all of these and these, which is good. Anything else we've not we've left out here? I mean, the old world ways. Lithless drops, giant speakers propaganda, the old world of many means of psychological warfare. It's time to remind the world what it forgot. It claims Seattle. With the defeat of the Washington Brotherhood, we're sort of the greatest city of the Pacific Northwest. We've heard that the Washington Brotherhood worships a dark foundry, but as we dig them out of the ruins of Seattle, it appears the truth is more prosaic. A Zack supercomputer survived the war and has been advising the Washington Brotherhood in exchange for resources. Hard to imagine anyone would be dumb enough to follow a supercomputer, but it's picked up a great deal of knowledge and advice about the Wasteland, and the Mad AI, pull the plug, copies the banks while tries to solve pie. Eh, resources. North to Alaska. The Washington Brotherhoods. Uh, databanks told of pre-war American soldiers designing to slumber through a nuclear war on in Alaska Nice. We should send an expedition to wake these firemen and or fine men and women. The men and women who missed the end of the world stumbled out of their suspended animation pods, looking at sh oddly short men and women who handed them blankets and soup that tasted almost like chicken. Don't worry, said one of the nurses. It's been a while. Well, on behalf of the enclave, let me assure you that the Star Spangled Banner yet waves over the land of the free and home of the brave. You honestly just didn't miss much. Now we're going to search for the purest. Oops, I should have read that one first. Oh, we know a contingent of purists disappeared north of Seattle. We should find them. What horrors awaited during our return to Seattle. One of our main priorities was to find those who fled the Sierra Army Depot during our <coughs> reformation. White all companies, scientists, but most importantly Anderson, we managed to trace their movements to nor north to what we thought was MacArthur Air Force Base until a freak blizzard diverted them towards Seattle where they came under uh, the employment of uh, the Washington Brotherhood. The dark founders of Seattle welcomed all, and even when our investigation team started looking into the records, many wish we didn't. The best and brightest were fed to those infernal machines, their brain power advancing knowledge of the cost of their souls, of course. Uh, we don't know how many were fed in there, but what became of them, we can't help but fear that a lot of them might be still alive in there, screaming in pain or shouting to get out. This is actually kind of disturbing. Fantastic. Uh, implement? Imp uh, implants? Sure, why not? Burn it all? Best to never know. Eh, I guess we'll burn it all. Nothing like a good old burning session. Old roadways and the uh, ox on the run. 
Frumentari are in shambles, and Vulpus is in a panic. Now it's time to strike and bring the fox hill before the eagle. It's a massacre. The engineering team broke into a series of tunnels before they were attacked by dozens of reptilian mutants and slaughtered them wholesale. Basically, they responded before they themselves were overrun as hundreds of things flooded out of the tunnel that we had dug. We would have uh, lost everyone at the base had they not retreated upon the sunlight. It seems they have an aversion to bright light. The bases have been evacuated with a response and emergency units moving in. So, we're getting uh, readings from the seismic sensors and it's indicating a lot more movement underneath than before. It appears we struck a mutant nor in its nest. Due to the nature of the nuclear weapons stored at the base, heavy ordnance is ruled out, meaning the only way to get rid of these things is the hard way. Given that they easily wiped out a squad of power armored infantry, it's not going to be so easy to remove them this time. Prepared demolition teams will burn them out. Do we have our own mutants for this? Old world ways. Psychological operations as they attempt to influence, disrupt, or corrupt, or usurp adversarial human decision making through the employment of propaganda, audio disruption, uh, visual hallucinations, uh, demoralization, and intimidation. While the United States pre war lacked its, against its adversary in China, uh, the enclave has learned much over the 200 years, and it's something the Legion hasn't prepared against when most of the adversary are educating tribals and not dealing with America the beautiful Blair over all speaker every night. There's still a bunch of tribals, anyways. Search for the purest. So you go to order the uh, order as well. But well, we'll get there. The purest, please? Or, okay, maybe logistics instead first? Alright, whatever. Nice. And we're going in. Disaster in the divide. The situation in the base has only gotten worse. The things emerge at night only. And the Verber flies and security perimeter have barely been able to contain them. What's more, they can easily tunnel through the ground, and our soldiers have given over to calling them tunnelers. During the daylight hours, we've been able to send in automated units to scout. But even the mighty sentry bots taken down by just a handful of these things, thankfully. They can't fly, and our vertebrates have been providing overwatch, and are more on their way as of now. The situation is stable. What was not stable was the military staff when Granite put forth this plan to have the slanter take control of the situation. It wasn't that any of the general staff were prejudiced against the slanter. Other the divide mutants were known to take down a sentry bot with numbers and ease. Even the Salanta called in were a little hesitant at reading the reports, yet, as the meeting drew on, more and more commanders came over to the President's side. The Salanta were well adapted to fighting in closed environments, and their head and senses would give them an advantage underground. With further push, thanks to Granite's ruthless charisma, the decision was made. All that was left was to gather the strike force, prepared to face the might of the American military. Oh boy. Can we, like, move in? Bros? Are we good here? All dead. As it should be. Nothing like a little bit more war to keep us nice and lubricated, anyways. Um, you know what we're gonna do? We're gonna deploy some uh, guys here. And we do one, two, three, four, five, six. There we go. And seven, whatever. Assault weaponry, nice. We have some buses. Good. Commonwealth, Northern Cons, yes. Corner Fox. The trap was set the moment Le Legion from Antari walked into the caves below the base. Pre placed charges detonated the only, over their only escape, leaving the Legion trapped. All their men was a dozen Legion assa assassins, a Sigma team with stealth boys, and one terrified uh, Desert Fox. Callahan himself enjoyed a new Coca Cola at the top of the Old State Park, reading over some records from an ill fated NCR expedition to this place. They weren't so lucky with a mire lurks as his, shoot, as his crew had been. When the screams and the gunfire calmed down, the colonel descended into the caves to count the bodies and see if there were any survivors, wondering which batch Vulpus would be in. So we get him? And the Frumentari, which happened a while ago. Going ahead to hand him to Callahan. Not only was the Frumentari destroyed in a as a fighting force, many of his members were being actively hunted by the Enclave, Intelligence, and the Legion for the families, or failures. What's more, Vulpus and Colta was among those collected at the ambush at Guardian Peak. Callahan himself was unhappy with the fact that Vulpus died in the fighting, but it seems to have gone over it. Given how his entire organization was in shambles, his death ordered by Kaiser himself and every facet of the American government was hunting him, it was victory enough. Granite knew, or however, noticed. He seemed to be taking it too well after near obsessing with Vulpus for the past few weeks. He seemed almost nonchalant, but then again, Enclave Intelligence was always a little off. Granite handed the papers uh, to Callahan's assistant, the special agent Lucius Pentlov, who Callahan mentioned was an instrumental in bringing down the Frumentari, and Vulpus in particular. Granite noted it was a bit odd that he'd never heard of this up-and-coming agent before, but the man was a bona fide American in every way, in shape and form, loyal, honest, and with an intrepid spirit that Granite recognized that he had in his younger days. Not to mention a winning smile, Lucius was ready to start field work soon, with Callan pointing out that the agent needed experience as a field operative if he was going to be promoted. Well, see himself prove that. 
Navarro Training Center, Navarro Arsenal. Uh, training Center, I like Arsenal. A vast production and storage facility located on the base, able to produce everything from stim packs to laser rifles to full on suits of advanced power armor. All right. I'm gonna risk it here. All the way into Nebraska. almost all of them. And we'll get one more. Uh, let's go that one. Cool. For they will be found scared and alone. During a sweep of feral ghouls in the Seattle Metro, security team stumbled across the tattered remains of an enclave unit that had been hiding out down there. They're protecting a series of refugees that had escaped from the Washington Brotherhood. Uh, but that wasn't all of them. Leading them was the commander, uh, oh god, uh, Rebecca Whitehall, who apparently found God in the air of her ways as a purist. In fact, many of the refugees down here seem to think of her and their men as saviors. Well, we're of course to send the refugees out to be cared for. That leaves the question to Whitehall. They can return, they suffered enough. A drop for them all, we should not forgive traitors. Well, I don't know about that yet. Uh, Montana Enclave, uh, MacArthur Air Force Base, and the pre-war era served alongside Mountain Home as a fighter and meant, not meant to shield America from Chinese airstrikes against the Lower 48 with a secondary mission of operating against communist Canadian terrorists that resisted American liberation. Of course, its post-war story is just as important with Colonel, now General, Santiago restoring the base to working order and ensuring the continuation of the American dream in the Northern Commonwealth and providing assistance to Chicago. Now back in America's ready hands, the base is ready to return to our operations against those of Third America. Nice. Good. Sure, why not? Maelstrom. Maelstrom at Malmstrom. Our excavation construction team's arrival at Malmstrom Air Force Base was met with a trouble for us to worship the former United States Air Force. Well, in a very twisted way, though. Believing the gods would be literally in the sky when one of the tribal members would defeat the other in ritual combat, they would turn that person into a kite using their body parts. That was a disturbing development. <clears throat> Had the army moving in and out, and we don't use this term lightly. Pur purifying the base and removing any many of the human kites, human bone charms, and effigies of crazy tri tribes made. The base itself has been returned to strategic air command, who are ready to develop the base for continued operations of the Great White North. Wait, what are these guys in Colorado? Mount Rushmore. Uh, Wild Wilderwood has become something of a legend um, amongst denizens of the Northwest Commonwealth. Just filled with all sorts of mutated monsters. Uh, there'll be raiders or just plain old spooky legends. It was widely avoided. That change is the still snow on the street and the trees in windswept silence was shattered by the vertebrates flying in low in a security sweep. Not far off among a mountain with the face of the leaders of the old world, uh, lights were affixed as aircraft continued to hover around it. On the ground, laser weapons fired, chased off feral ghouls and engineers, and as engineers began erecting force fields to keep anything else at bay. Mount Rushmore had been founded, or found. Having weathered the storm of the Great War, a single nuclear weapon was found at its base. Having never gone off, um, as base bomb technicians deactivated, the monument is officially returned to American hands. Unfortunately, the nature of the wilder woods. Then it'll be some time before I can return to the fall of the monument and to our status, but it's great for propaganda. You think we'd be able to laser in it or something? Last thing anyone expected. Rel Austin has reservation striking up an alliance with the Enclave. But they've been true to their word and even treated them as equals, at least in law. It was impossible for every human to see them as anything but mutated raccoons, however. They done well to the Salanter and even cured his illness, allowing him to continue living and leading his people. When representatives from the army arrived were requesting assistance with a crisis for the South, the old Salanter was confused. He heard war stories from the Salanter uh, Officer Corps, or Scout Corps. The Enclave Army was one of the most powerful in the world, having tamed all of Nevada and swept aside the NCR like it was nothing. If they had come to him now, it must have been dire. The old Salanter, along with the Scout Corps veterans, listened as the army officers explained the situation in the divide. Right now, America needs its smallest members. Further store Frayne. Barracks, a small National Guard post in North Dakota, served as one of the main expedition posts for operations in Canada. For the store Fort Meade, a National Guard post in South Dakota with according facilities. However, the base is also known as the home of the Star Spangled Banner, an Ellsworth Air Force Base. 
A global strike command base in South Dakota, one of the few bases still designated to strike the Soviet Union during the resource wars. Nice. A uh, president's and barons next. Hopefully. Hopefully next. No guarantee. Well, radar, a modern and expensive radar installation, which we read before. We'll be able to see far and beyond into the Pacific and into the Northwest and keep an eye on things approaching San Francisco. The Barons Land. The trade caravans going to the former Barons Irie have complained about recent rise in radar attacks along the routes. Uh, so much so that several caravan companies have called for the FBI to assist. The senior agent's suspicion immediately fell to the, le fell to the leader of the former Irie, who has started offering caravan security at increased rates. We're not stupid. We've seen this before in Reno, the hub, and the sub. Just short of accusing him of what we know, the FBI pressed a question to the Barons knew of anyone who would be dumb enough to create a protection racket, because that person would be met meet a swift end. The senior agent reported that Baron grew very reserved and declined knowing anyone. It's a sheer coincidence that the FBI's fuel office main, main base of operations was targeted with sniper fire the next day, all of whom were gunned down. Agents are requesting an executive action to remove uh, said issue. Show them how we did in Reno. Turn him into goo. Disaster in Casper. The streets of Casper Day shook when the Bailey Stockyard House erupted into a thunderous explosion that wiped out the building. The rescue crews from the U.S. Army and the Fire Service Commission were quickly on the scene to try to put out the flames and rescue survivors. The cause of the blast is yet to be determined, but initial reports seem to indicate that a stockpile of demolitions were prematurely detonated, seeing parts of the buildings for miles. At least 15 are dead with only three survivors. Among the dead is Augustus Bailey, longtime benefactor of the city of Casper. Funeral services will be held in the following days, but many of the bodies remain charred beyond recognition. Furthermore, the fire marshal reports that at least one body has been turned into plasma plasmated goo, following what they think was a plasma grenade detonation during the explosion that caused the body of whoever it was to stabilize. What a tragedy of men. A meeting of man and mutant. Wow, look how much of we annex so far. Jesus Christ. Insane. Fantastic. What they were sent what they were asking was a tall order, even for FEV mutants. These tunnel or creatures seem fierce for his part. Real Austin was invited to New Reno to personally meet with President Grant at the first time since the two signed the Unification Treaty. Grant welcomed the old Salanter warmly, given the Salanter every report he personally had received, and the old Salanter looked over with some concern. These things they were basically animals, and in fact he could take down death claws with these. A monster Salanter legend was nothing but an afternoon hunt for the things. He also read the casualty reports and sat back in his chair. He cast his eyes over to the U.S. flag that Grant had in the corner. Sort of his own kid and had been killed in the operation the past few years, some fighting alongside with humans who brought them in. Rail also fought, fought back to the day when they arrived at the burrows and extended a welcome hand. welcoming hand. He also remembered when the first unit of his scout corps was sent to war and the glowing praise that was delivered to him from the actions. Stealing his resolve, he would help the country that had brought him in and welcomed him to their nation. Sitting on his chair, mostly to be eye level with Granite, Rail Austin agreed that the Salanter scout corps would do everything in their power to assist in defeating this crisis. I made the right decision accepting you guys. Let's kill them. Oh, they're allied with these guys too. And we've dropped. Precision motor's nice. Oh, that one over there. Uh, what else we got around here? Not much. We've already done a crud ton of research stuff, have we not? Better fighters, nice. Very nice. How's that not enough to capitulate them? Ah, sanctum. They're breaking, kill them all. They'll be liberated eventually, I'm not super worried about it. Slant to reach the divide. First land arrived at the perimeter within hours, delivered by vertebrae. Their small size allowed several dozens to be delivered in just a single bird. Oh, that's pretty good. Uh, when some, while some were raw recruits, the vast bulk of them were the veterans of the Enclave's wars and the Raider pacification campaigns. Uh, receiving their briefing, the mutated raccoons got to work making their way towards the base. At the same time, the ground commander, accepting but skeptical of the Salantra, had been working setting up a series of modified armored vehicles with floodlights to try and reach a breach. The Salantra major thanked the ground commander before setting off with the rest of his troops. I trust them. Look at the job done. Gives me hope. Restoring Area 51 in Nevada test site. Groom Lake T National Test Site, or Area 51, and codenamed Dreamland, our most advanced base, so secret even members of the Enclave weren't allowed to know everything. Now it's ours again. Hey, you guys just get down there.
Mutant versus mute. The Solanter have made contact with the tunnelers at the first. The mutated humanoids didn't even know what make of the furry FEV raccoons. They, oh crap. Uh, observe the little fuzzy creatures with confusion before the Solander struck. Operating small unit stack, Mr. Solander took down several within the base before the tunnelers finally recognized him as a threat. While the Solander took some casualties, a mix of their honest military tactics and old hunting tricks kept them relatively light. What's more, the tunnelers weren't even safe when they tried to dig underground with the burrowing as Solander following them into their holes and striking them on their own turf. Seismic sensors are picking up what can only be described as small localized explosives. Luckily, the Solander using grenades and other explosives to try and root these things out. It's an inch little beast, aren't they? Fantastic. Hey, these guys exist, you should kill them. Wow, we just overran we overran them. Fantastic, my boys and girls. Something happened. During a resupply reinforce and re -evac evacuation room, one of our pilots noticed that the Solander had captured several of the larger brutes, and were apparently trying to ride the thing like a Brahmin at a rodeo. When asked the reason for this insubordination, the Solander Major calmly replied that his troops were taking some initiative in the tactics and applying the US Army's spirit of innovation. He explained. Uh, uh, that the Tunnelers were no different than any of the mutated horrors they'd encountered in the past, and that they could be tamed, they could be used. He points to how Solander had tamed the giant mole rats in the past as burdens, beasts of burden, and these Tunnelers were just a scale, scaly humanoid versions of them. If they could tame at least a few, they might be able to create a sort of cavalry corps and handle the rest. The ground commander had reported that the plan was crazy, but just crazy enough, it might just work. There goes the order, thank God. Nice. It was a more difficult than I thought it would be, but whatever. We got him. And that, my friends, is what really matters. Reclamation Army Depot. Most of our pre-war bases and forts are either stripped clean, rotting away, or overrun by robots or post-war miladies. Losing robots due to high amount of automation with the war with China caused, places like Sierra Armor Depot are far and far few between, which was a great surprise when the Army forces approached Reclamation Army Depot and was greeted by General H-47, who only, not only recognized our codes, but recognized us as Enclave. The good robot general self-proclaimed mind has been dutifully carried out, carrying out his orders at the depot for the past 200 years, though he's been distracted by the mutant escapee from Deadline. He's more than happy to relinquish command of the base over the U.S. Army, as 200 years has not been kind of circuitry and servo joints. Stand down, General. Your watch is over. And let's read one more, too. After we do, we'll do Restore in Dreamland, continue to in integrate more places. Um, so all of these are done. That we can do. We got this one going. We can investigate the labs. Anything else up here that we miss at all? That's all the original stuff. We miss a lot here. A sailor's life. I heard this before, but there are many reasons to join the Navy. They call us Emerald Sea, the better chance of not being killed by a jet addict, the chance to see the world and maybe even fight a Kraken or a storm on my power ship. And that's the Navy today. We've got a lot more stuff to do down here and everything else. So, But, as you can see, we're starting to slowly end the campaign, but we'll get there eventually. So, If you enjoyed the video, though, please consider leaving a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I will see you tomorrow as we'll continue on with the United States. We're looking fantastic. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.